Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions that you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Now today, I wanna to talk a little bit about symbols. Now, did you know that there's actually an NFPA standard for fire safety and emergency symbols? And that's NFPA 170. So let's go in and take a look at NFPA 170. Click right here. We see that the current edition of NFPA 170 is the 2024 edition. And the NFPA 170, which is the standard for fire safety and emergency symbols. Now, anytime I'm introducing a new standard, I like to take a look at the scope and the purpose and introduce that. So we're gonna go into chapter one and we're gonna go look at first the scope. Now we see here the scope of this standard is to present symbols that are used for fire safety, emergency, and associated hazards. Now that makes sense based on the title. Now what's the purpose? The purpose for this standard is to standardize the symbols used in representing fire safety, emergency, and associated hazards. Now that purpose is basically if we're making signs and using symbols, whether it's in drawings or signs, we wanna make sure that everybody understands what those symbols mean. So if we standardize those symbols, it makes it more easy for people to understand what those signs are, are actually saying. Now, what kind of things are covered by 170? Let's take a look over here at the table of contents and see what different things we have here. First, we've got chapter four, general use symbols. We've got symbols for use by the fire service, symbols for architectural and engineering drawings, as well as in insurance diagrams. Then we have symbols for water supply, extinguishing systems, sprinkler systems, drawings, things like that. Chapter eight, which is electronic fire and smoke detection and notification systems, so essentially fire alarm system symbols. We got symbols for pre-incident planning. So if you're in the fire department doing pre-incident planning, um, those are some symbols there that you can use. Some symbology used for emergency management mapping. And then finally here, emergency evacuation diagrams and plans. So it covers a wide range of different things uh, as far as symbols and there's also some annexes here probably one of the most um, useful annexes is going to be annex a which is some explanatory material and annex b is additional explanatory material and then we've got some annexes here on emergency responder mapping and firefighter safety building marking systems i just want to go into one of the chapters and show what this looks like so symbols for use by the fire service which is chapter five is going to have all those symbols and we're gonna have requirements in here talking about <clears throat> orientation, color, things like that. But probably one of the most useful parts of this standard is gonna be the tables that provide the different symbols that you use. So we've got a table here. I'm gonna go ahead and expand it. And it's showing all the different symbols that we can use for different things that the fire department's gonna to wanna to know where they are. Whether that's a fire department connection, if that's for um, a sprinkler system, or if we've got standpipe connections, maybe the standpipe connections uh, for a combination sprinkler system standpipe, different hydrants, electrical panel shutoffs. There's a lot of different things I'm gonna scroll through you'll see that are covered here that are all things that are most likely gonna be used for the fire service when they're trying to provide signage, mostly for when they're responding. Now, there's a lot of different things. The symbols for fire alarm, for example, um, that's a pretty extensive table here that has a lot of different symbols for all the different parts of a fire alarm system whether it be the fire alarm control panel or the fire alarm control unit um, all the way down to the different types of detectors so this is all control units in this table we can scroll down we have different types of initiating devices and related equipment and you can scroll down and see notification appliances notification appliance symbols and so on so it's a lot of different equipment here it's really helpful for anyone who's making again signs symbols if you're doing drawings if you're an engineer if you're in the fire service a lot of this is important now that's the basic overview of nfpa 170. Um, I highly encourage you, again, if you're involved and you use symbols, make signs, go ahead and take a look at these. It, you might actually find some different symbols that you might not have been using, or maybe you're using some outdated symbols that aren't in the standard or, the, or they're different. So I highly encourage you to take a look. And 
NFPA link is the best way to go through this, especially if it's a standard that you just want to take a look at. You don't necessarily want to purchase it. You can get it as along with all the NFPA codes and standards. For more information on how you can use NFPA link to give you knowledge to get your job done right, go ahead and visit nfpa.org slash link.